in today's video I'm going to be sharing with you my process of working with and connecting to plant spirit allies and herbs to create a number of herbal formulas for my witch's apothecary to support with my divination practice both in the physical plane as well as in the astral. I'm going to be partnering with these plants and herbs to craft a psychic divination cell and an incense blend to support with tarot readings, pendulum readings, scrying, astral travel and dream work. Plus I share my recipe for a divination tea to focus the mind, open the third eye and bring clarity, protection and wisdom to all readings and dream interpretations. For this video I'm also collaborating with Heather Lynn, the Wild Forest Witch at the Wild Forest Witchery. You can find a link to her video in the description box below. For now, let's begin our adventure. Welcome back to the channel. So I'm going through some of my books and looking at some herbal allies that I potentially want to work with today. So today we are in these beautiful woodlands, I love it here. This is a different woodland to the woodland you would have seen me walking in recently on a recent video and here there are lots of dips and these swings that have been set up on various trees so the children really really enjoy it. One thing I love about this woodland as well is this like lovely little clearing here. It feels like you could absolutely use this for ritual space meetings etc. Not that I have met anyone here yet but it is something I would love to do because this is just a beautiful, beautiful space. So I'm here today to do some scouting for some herbs to potentially use within my magic. If you follow my channel you'll know that my practice is quite folk magic inspired and definitely in the realms of hedge witch so I do a lot of divination, I do a lot of dream work, I do a lot of astral travel and things like that and I also work with a lot of herbs, making oils and salves and also currently taking an astrology course so I'm interested in a lot of different aspects of magical practices and traditions and it's something that I've always been interested in. When I first came to the craft I was about 11 years old so everything was about Wicca then and that's primarily what I read to start with but it was tarot that was one of the first things that I fell in love with in terms of like a specific practice aside from being general magical practitioner and tarot for me is probably one of my main forms of divination other than I'd say receiving downloads or prophecies like in the hypnagogic state or dreams that are prophetic which I do keep a dream journal and that's really really important for me and so I wanted to create something that would support my divination practice because I also do like to scry and I also use a pendulum occasionally and so I like to follow my intuition with these practices and so I wanted to create something that I would be able to use within my practice to support my focus, my mental concentration and like clarity as well as sort of opening up the third eye, getting me into shifting my realities and allowing me to sort of step into that otherworldly space so that I can receive messages and downloads more clearly and remember them. I think one of the biggest things that I've noticed that has been a hurdle is remembering and that's one of the reasons why I find a dream journal so important and I've kept a dream journal for many years now. I stopped during lockdown because homeschooling the kids and dream journaling was just not working so I, I just couldn't do it then but it really really does help to do that. So I want to create a few formulas to support my divination practice both within sort of astral realms and dream realms as well as during my waking life so using some of these formulas for supporting my divination practice with tarot, with scrying, with using a pendulum and I want to have these tools on hand so that I can get them out and use them at a moment's notice and I think it's going to be really really fun. 
So I don't know what I'm going to find today. I don't know yet what I'm going to use. I do know the kinds of things I'm looking for, but I also like to work with specific plant spirits in a very intuitive way. So whilst, you know, I do have lots and lots of books on magical herbal work, I have herbalism books, I have field guides and gardening guides and lots and lots of books about green witchcraft and green magic and herbs and trees and plants etc. I do like to work with a plant spirit and I like to connect with a plant spirit. I was speaking a little bit about this in my last video and it's something I'd like to talk more about on my channel because it really is important to me and I found that the more I work with various plants the more my relationship with those plants deepens and it becomes a really dynamic dialogue and like communion with the plant that is kind of alive. It's it sort of becomes something in itself and I do believe there are certain plants you know that I have that connection with stronger than others and so I'm working on obviously building that connection with others so that I'm not just taking a herb and saying oh this is what I've read in a book and here it is in a magical formula and here I am using it in a spell. I want to get closer to the plants and so I'm working on connecting to various different plant spirit energies, plant herbal allies and ingesting them if I can and working with the spirit of them, meditating with them, talking to them, asking them what they're here to help me with etc. So I really feel like it's a communion and a meeting with another spirit and absolutely a very dynamic experience to work with these plant spirits. So for me that's really really important and definitely I think getting the herbal medicine as well as you know working with the plants magically is really really important and really key so that's what I love to do and I love connecting to herbal allies and trees etc in spaces like this because it's just so so beautiful here so let's just take a little walk this is a gorgeous cedar tree I absolutely love cedar this is pretty special under here This is a beautiful oak tree and I've talked a little bit about oak on my channel before and potentially on my Instagram and on my TikTok. So oak is such a beautiful protective tree. I consider it to be like an elder. It's really wise and it's got so many protective qualities, very healing. It's of course within the Celtic tree calendar and it's just one of my favourite, favourite trees to connect with, to meditate with. Because oaks often are very, very large, very ancient trees, they are very, very highly respected and associated with gods and they have that definite wisdom about them. And I do get quite a masculine vibe. I don't mean that in terms of sexual identity or gender, really. I mean, so the word is wrong. But yeah, I do get a very active kind of quality. It feels very strong and grounding to be beneath an oak tree. And I think that's probably one of the reasons why I love to connect to the oak. It also reminds me, of course, of the green man and Kununos. And the oak tree was really sacred to the Romans, the Celtic pagans to the Greeks to the Norse as well and it's sacred to gods like the Dagda and Thor and Zeus and Jupiter. The oak is also of course sacred to the Druids and the word Druid is said to derive from a Celtic word and Druid I believe means knower of the oak. Within the Celtic tree calendar it represents the midsummer time. Its name is Quercus Alba. So the bark is really really healing and can heal infections and things. It has sort of antiseptic qualities to it. It's also said to support with sore throats and stomach issues and things like that. It's associated with the sun and the element of fire, as well as many of the gods that I've mentioned. And in terms of magic, it can be used for just about anything, for protection, for grounding, for luck and success and virility and fecundity and you know all kinds of really powerful things so just sort of manifestation in general and I feel a very loving vibe from it as well so I think love magic money success and like power as well and parts of it as well such as the oak moss and the acorns can be used in divination so I think that's really really interesting
This is a yew tree. It's very poisonous. It's a me tree. A yew tree. So I'm just using some incense here to cleanse the jar. So I'm going to prepare the herbs for the salve and I'm going to be working with mugwort first. I am going to use about 100 mils of sweet almond oil to make this salve. So I need about 15 grams of the herbs which is around 3 to 4 grams of each herb. So I'm using my scales but also just eyeballing it a little bit and of course imbuing my intention. I'm also using jasmine here as well as the mugwort and all of these herbs that I'm using have these properties for opening the third eye and calling in psychic protection and powers for divination and prophecy and clairvoyance. I'm also working with Eye Bright here, which is fantastic for opening that third eye and bringing mental clarity. The final plant spirit that I'm calling on for this salve is yarrow, and yarrow is a really beautiful healing and soothing herb that's also associated with psychic abilities and divination. But it has this beautiful quality of calming and soothing which is perfect for readying the body to alter your state of mind and move into a trance state. Perfect for tarot reading, scrying, divination of all types. As I will it, so it is done. So I'm going to be using 100 mils of sweet almond oil to mix with the herbs here. And every step of the way, I've been working with each herb individually and then with the blend to call in those plant spirit allies specifically for each little task. And I'm speaking to it, I'm pushing my energy in, I'm blowing my intention in, I'm using my hands and I'm pushing all of that energy that I've raised into each herb and asking the herb in question to support me with whatever aspect of this intention that I have set. So now I place the oil in a bain-marie and I just use this copper pot and it's water that is about 40 degrees centigrade and it needs to infuse in a fast infusion over this warm water for about an hour and I stir throughout and you can smell the herbs and the plant spirit medicine imbuing into the oil and it's just a really beautiful meditative process so again I'm using this time to speak words of intention and I have included some of my whisperings but taken out quite a lot of what I have said because I do feel that it's quite private and I don't like to share my incantations and my actual spells, spoken spells, because they are so private. But I do find the best way is to simply speak to the plant spirit ally and ask it for its support and to just be honest and open and as authentic as you can. As I will it, so it is. So after about an hour or so, you can remove it from the heat and allow it to cool. And then you can get started with the beeswax. I'm using 20 grams worth of beeswax to the 15 grams of herbs and the 100 mils of the oil. And it's quite difficult to chop up, but you can purchase it in pellets as well. So you simply want to put it into another jar and heat it in the same way. The beeswax of course has magical properties too as a byproduct of honey. It makes it so beautifully rich, the food of the gods. So 
I like to call on the spirit of the beeswax for abundance and also for that diligence as well with this truth seeking, knowledge seeking, divination practice that we're engaging with and it's a really really beautiful medium to work with. So I have my jars here, I'm going to use this amber jar as well as these smaller jars and I'm going to use frankincense essential oil and some jasmine essential oil and some sandalwood. The jasmine will echo the jasmine herb which is associated with the moon of course for divination. The sandalwood is really heady and of course associated again with psychic divination and the frankincense as well is a really really sacred resin that is used in a lot of spiritual incenses and rituals. So next I'm going to work on the psychic divination incense that I'm going to prepare and I'm going to be working with a few more plant spirit allies for this incense. I wanted to keep the herbs that I worked with for the soul minimal so that I could really feel their presence and essence within the soul. For this I'm calling on mugwort again and this time I'm eyeballing it really and just adding what I feel and so working with each herb again in turn mugwort is also associated with the moon and of course psychic abilities and divination prophecy I use it a lot in dream work and astral travel I'm also working with mullene here and mullene has very calming soothing properties and it's perfect for use within prophetic dreams as well so it's a really really soothing and calm inducing herb. I'm also working with jasmine again to echo the jasmine that I worked with in the salve and again I have edited a lot of this but I am grinding up what I need to grind up within the mortar and pestle and at the same time I'm blowing my intentions in and using my hands and the energy that I've raised within myself pushing it through my hands uh, into the herbs. So I'm also using cardamom here and this is associated with other realms, astral travel as well as clarity and because it's quite an intense spice I also think of it as quite powerful, quite potent, highly charged, energetic, really really intense and powerful and so it's bringing that empowerment to the mix as well. Eyebright again and Eyebright is for that mental clarity, for that focus, so we can really connect to the third eye, open up that third eye and see past the veil. And again, putting all the intentions in and asking the plant spirit to support us. Again, I'm calling on Yarrow for those same calming, soothing properties and to keep that peaceful feeling because you want to be focused on your divination practice. This star anise is associated with mercury so it's perfect for communication and the scent is just so intoxicatingly beautiful and of course associated with psychic powers. Cloves as well, again a really really fiery herb or spice and really just beautiful for this work. It has this otherworldly quality to it. Also I'm working with frankincense here which of course is very sacred and wild roses as well which Kareem Boyer speaks about in Plants of the Devil as being associated to prophecy and divination as well as the devil of course. I absolutely love that book and would highly recommend to anyone. So I'm adding some more frankincense here and adding it to the mix, stirring it up together and just again imbuing my intention. It smells absolutely incredible, I wish I had smell vision So I've put it back into the bowl and again just using some extra intention and energy just to push 
that into my mix so this is going to provide a really really beautiful space aroma for us as we're working. And now I have the oak moss that I've collected as well as an oak leaf and also a little acorn but I'm going to be just adding this oak moss to this incense blend here. It is so beautiful. I'm going to be just focusing my intent on the oak moss for the divination aspect and stirring it into the mix. So now my herbal preparations are ready, I'm going to start to prepare myself. So I'm going to start with a shower and I'm going to use this Vision Soap I picked up recently and I'm just going to cleanse all of the negative energy off myself and visualise all of that leaving my body. So this is a glamour oil, a beauty self-love oil I made for myself also using sweet almond oil and some essential oils and herbs. So this is part of my regular routine and I add this to my body and my hair and I usually pluck my hair for a number of reasons, both magical and practical. So I have some jasmine tea here and some damiana. This is what I tend to smoke with and sometimes use it in a tea. And this is peppermint tea here. So these all came from the kitchen apothecary, so very different to the herbs I've been using already. So I'm going to add a couple of teaspoons of each of these herbs, again focusing on my intent each time. And I am going to imbue my intention, again pushing my energy through my hands. I'm also adding a teaspoon or two of this beautiful local Devonshire honey and again calling in that magic of the honey. So I'm taking my time now to set up my space and just get myself into the meditative headspace. So I'm lighting a charcoal briquette and I'm going to use this eucalyptus to cleanse my space and also myself. So I'm taking my time with this and really just meditating. So here is the finished Psychic Divination Cell. I really love how this turned out, it smells amazing. And I have two other pots and I've already started to use one of the smaller pots. So that's the one I'm gonna be working with today. So I'm just anointing my wrists as well as behind my ears and my throat chakra and also at my third eye as well. And here is the finished incense blend for psychic divination and it also smells incredible. Um, just making sure I get a little bit of everything, including the resin. If you like to make intense blends and blend them up, you can do that as well, which will give you a more kind of consistent scent. But I love this. The smoke is just gorgeous and I'm just using it to, again, cleanse myself and my space and get myself into the headspace ready for divination. I'm going to be using the Pagan Otherworlds tarot deck I'm also cleansing my scrying ball. I need to really do this at night, so I'm probably going to do that later. And this is the Woodland Wardens deck by Jessica Rue, which is so beautiful. I'm also cleansing the pendant that I use as a pendulum. And I'm starting to shuffle my cards. And again, I like to cleanse my deck each time or reset it and I use my breath and the smoke to do this. So I also like to centre and ground before I begin a reading. I connect to my ancestors and the spirits I work with before I start to shuffle. If any cards pop out I always use those and I also feel if I know I need to stop shuffling and I feel if I need to pull a card from any point in the deck 
this is something I know intuitively from working with tarot for a long time. When I use this pendulum, I am connecting to a specific deity that I work with and I have a process of asking questions and I understand exactly which direction is which answer. This process took quite a long time but it was really rewarding and offered a lot of clarity to the tarot reading. I also want to introduce you to Heather Lynn, the Wild Forest Witch at the Wild Forest Witchery. And Heather creates beautiful videos sharing her wild witchcraft practice. Heather explores forest witchcraft, hedge druidry and herbalism and shares her personal gnosis and her wild magical practice. It's really inspiring watching Heather's channel and I thoroughly encourage you to go over and watch her video and like and subscribe of course it has been a pleasure getting to know Heather and collaborating with Heather on this video thank you so much for joining me for today's video I really hope that you have enjoyed sharing this process with me as I connected to these plant spirit allies and worked with these herbs to create and craft a beautiful salve and an incense and a tea to support my divination practice. I really, really hope that you try some of these methods and ideas and please do let me know if you do. I'd love to hear from you and hear about your practice, what you're crafting and working with and how you're connecting to herbal allies. I have an Instagram and a TikTok page which are linked below as well as a Patreon where I am sharing some recipes that I feature here on the channel in bespoke Book of Shadows pages. I'm also sharing full and new moon full forecasts as well as tarot spreads that I create for that particular lunation. I'd love to have you join over on Patreon so the link is below. Like and share the video and subscribe of course if you haven't already and click that notification bell. Thank you again for watching and many blessings.